back home. It was a thousand kilometers away. They forced them to go to the Indian Rest Center School. More than 150,000 of us children had to go. They wanted to change us. Our Father in heaven, Our Father in heaven hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. Kill the Indian and the child. It's been called cultural genocide. I survived residential school. My brother Johnny did not. Chani Wenjack was one of thousands of children who died due to Canada's residential school system. More than 80,000 survivors and their families still live with its legacy today. Good morning. My name is Mr. Freeman. You just heard Chani Wenjack's story. It's a story that uh, continues to impact me. Uh, a big part of empathy and learning empathy is to hear each other's stories, to share them, and to learn from the mistakes that have been made in the past. My name is Mr. Dykeshorn and I want to welcome you to uh, a day that's been uh, observed all throughout Canada, the National Truth and Reconciliation Day. Especially here at TD Christian, we are thankful that you are observing this day with us and Mr. Freeman's going to give you a little bit more about what to expect over the next 10 to 15 minutes. In this short video assembly, we will hear a land acknowledgement. We'll hear the story of Anne Callahan, first Indigenous nurse that we had here in Canada, and just the what she had to deal with in residential schools. And then we'll also hear a couple of final words from our very own student, Aidan Ward. We would like to start by acknowledging that we are on the traditional territories of the Wendat, the Haudenosaunee and the Anishinaabe peoples whose presence continue here to this day. We also would like to acknowledge that this is the treaty lands of the Mississaugas of the Credit and thank them and other indigenous people for sharing this land with us. We acknowledge this land and the people because the first step to reconciliation is recognizing the existence of the indigenous people. The Truth and Reconciliation Commission of Canada speaks to the significance of education as the key to reconciliation. A shared understanding of how our collective past brought us to where we are today will help us walk together into a better future. My name is Anne and I'm a residential school survivor. I am a thriver. Okay. He told me, my little girl, put on your dress, okay? I oh, was so proud of this little dress, you know, made out of flower bags, it's all nice and flower. So I sat beside him on the buckboard, and we had about six miles to go, you know, through the bush. He was very quiet, you know, and I'd look at him wondering what was going on. So we get to this, oh, I'm just happy, I'm going to see my, my sisters, you know. And we get around the bend in this great big red, you know, building. He took my hand, come with me, he said, and there was a, a children on the veranda, and my sister was around the corner. She didn't want to see this, okay? So anyway, you know, and he left me, you know, he let go of me, and then he walked, started walking down the gravel uh, part to the horses, and all of a sudden it dawned on me, he's leaving me here, he's forgetting me. I broke away from Pauline. Oh my goodness sakes, I ran after him, you know. And we started hitting the horses to get away from me. He couldn't get away, and he stopped his horses. And he got off the the buckboard. He come at the back, and he... He, uh, he picked me up, and he said, I can't take you with my girl. And he said, why can I go home with you no more? He said, why? I said, we'll go to jail. We can't keep your children at home, he said. You got to stay here. I, and I looked at my dad. I never saw my dad crying. My dad was crying. And he drove away. She 
And that's your grandma with the... Yeah, it was beautiful. Mom was the matriarch, okay? My dad was, uh, how shall I say, a very quiet man. But in my own way, he was a teacher. He uh, took us on nature tours, you know? At one time, I went with them to uh, pick berries, okay? It's one of the things, social things that we did. So driving a team of horses, you know, and a wagon and a buckboard, and they were talking Cree to one another. And it's like osmosis. You, I, although I didn't really understand them, but you can get the gist of what they were saying. And I heard them say, isn't she beautiful, you know? And I thought to myself, that was so wonderful. I knew I was loved. We were always, always punished, okay, for trivial things. You step out of line, you get cuffed on your ears, okay? Oh, I guess we tried our best to learn, but I couldn't learn, you know? I didn't want to learn. I was depressed. I believe there's childhood depression, okay? Because my mind was not on my books. I'd look out, out the window, nice green grass, bright sun, you know, and whatnot. I showed my report card to my dad. You can learn, he says, are these your grades? I said, yeah. And he, what do you want to do with that? I said, I think I want to go, go on, to, on to school, you know. So I learned a little bit about nursing. Worker staff in the kitchen would call me names, you know, being who I was, all that. What kind of names? Huh? What kind of names? Dirty Indian. Move back to your teepee. But you see, I think they might have been jealous because I had a nice uniform, white socks, you know, white shoes. I was special. <laughs> <laughs> I think. And I had to. Uh, get friendly with the other, you know, classmates. And there was about four or five that befriended me, you know, that helped me see around and whatnot. And they're my dearest friends today. And I think for myself that I excelled, okay? Because I think I had that warm bedside, you know, manner. At least my patients told me. You meet discrimination. You're very subtle, okay? You're left out, okay? You're avoided. Okay, well, that's all right. I've been avoided all my life in, <laughs> in non-Aboriginal community. <laughs> That's a good one. That's when I got the, the my doc. name, the Ann Thomas building. Oh, okay. Yeah. What was it like being told that you're going to have a building named after you? <laughs> I was very surprised, okay. Why, why me, you know, kind of thing. You're supposed to be humble. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like if you could conclude with sharing some final words with us uh, about challenges that Indigenous peoples face, whether it's from access to clean water, uh, equal health care, uh, what's on your mind? Yeah, so um, to this day, a lot of um, Indigenous children are still taken from their homes and put into not a residential school, but just into the government fostering system. Um, I, I was in the fostering system, but I wasn't take it from my home just because I was native I wasn't in a very safe environment um, but a lot of that just because some children are native are taken from their home 
uh, and put it into a system to maybe they, maybe people don't say it, but it's to assimilate them, to make them uh, the same as everybody else. Um, and a lot of a lot of us are are scared because um yeah a lot of things happen, and same with uh, women and um, how they go missing and murdered. Um, it's not just something that happens every once in a while. It's something that happens all the time, and not everything makes the news. Uh, not everything you see is the full the full story. So a lot of them they go missing and they're murdered or raped, uh, found, um, found dead in the woods, and they just have a ceremony, nothing they can do. And yeah, um, as for drinking water, uh, a lot of yeah, a lot of reserve. Uh, reserves don't have uh, clean drinking water um, and they're trying to find out trying to uh, make it so they have a filtration system um, and because of the uh, lifestyle or lifestyle that was forced upon them um, this hard one a lot of uh, there's a lot of suicides a lot of uh, deaths and um, a lot of trauma that comes with it well, thank you for taking the time to be with us on this assembly. As I was doing research and, uh, and working with the team here that came up with the assembly, uh, I came across a quote from Murray Sinclair, who is the head of this commission for National Truth and Reconciliation. And his hope for all of Canada as we go through this day is that we would see, hear, and believe the stories of our Indigenous people. So that's exactly what we hope happened today. I'm also gonna encourage you to do a little bit more on your own to, again, see more stories, to hear more stories, and to believe more stories. There's some great resources that have been in our daily announcements over the last couple of days, and there are just a ton of uh, resources also available here on this website. Without further ado, I'm going to ask Mr. Freeman to close the assembly in prayer, and after that, we hope that you have a great day. Join me in prayer. Lord, we uh, lift up today to you. Uh, we ask that we will be able to put reconciliation into practice, uh, that empathy will grow inside of us, and that we'll be able to put that into action. We just lift up each student that's part of our community today and ask for peace in this school. We pray this in your name. Amen.